Two more things I want to ask you about. Yeah. So, Kai Green. Yes. You have a very interesting past with Kai Green. Yes. Yeah, you guys had some battles on that stuff. Man, those were awesome. I still remember that press conference when you guys went at it. I think Ooh, it was... 14? 14, yes. 14, man. How mad were you at that press conference? Well, I was... Kai Green is a very methodical, eccentric type of person. So, like, when you're going against him, you have to understand... Right. You're going against one of the hardest working bodybuilders that ever, that ever lived, that ever walked this earth. So you have to match that in your own way. Uh, maybe not by poundage, but by intensity. You cannot fuck up at all. And he was more vocal. Uh, he always had a team with him of social media people. He was always doing those videos where I was just like in the gym, just doing my thing. And um, he got a great following from it. And... He kind of plays up a certain persona, you know, to get people on his side. But that's what you do. You create a character, you know, and people follow, follow that shit. And they became very inspired by his art, right. his physical body of work. Right. You cannot deny this man. That is one of the most dense bodybuilders I've ever seen in my life. His muscle is and I loved his work ethic. And I love the fact that he and I split people down the middle. Yankees right. and Red Sox. There is no... Was crazy. You can't Those be... Battles, yeah. No. You were Lakers, Celtics. That's it. Like, f*** Phil. He's a f*** Kai Green. It ain't both. And 2014, I, knew, I just knew. I told, my, I told my family and friends. I said, I said watch. He's going to do something stupid. And this is no diss to Kai, I just knew the time. I just knew how I would do it. I said, he signed the poster, right, Mr. Olympia? So he signed the poster a couple times, and I was pretty right, pissed right. at that shit. Now, and he started doing it on purpose. You Obviously, you do it one time, you're doing that shit on purpose. Mm -hmm. To get under your skin. Yeah, so I, it, it did. I was just like... You motherfucker. You know, like... <laughs> I'm going to get you, you know. So then, um, I knew 2013 hurt him. New 2013 hurt because it was a landslide. I mean, everybody knows. So 2014, you know, now um, with the movie already being out and this and that, he's playing off that that hype and this and that, whereas I'm kind of battling defending myself more because they were looking at him like, oh, the underprivileged child and this and that. Phil Heath's got everything handed to him. He's the gift. You get the gifts. That's that's how a lot of people, I mean, now we were talking about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people took that from the film. Right. So they, so they created the hate and this and that. And, and I was like, okay, well, that was just movie dude but, all right whatever so i knew going in that he could use that to his advantage like he could use that fanfare to his advantage and get get in my ass. and then um so him and george fair i knew they had a plan george fair kept saying the past is the past the past is the past mm -hmm. I said, okay, okay, okay. and then um i just knew i said when you can't beat him what can you do you can you can try to punk him mm -hmm. try to bully him try to get in the mind because that's one thing he hadn't tried yet that he could do to every other person. So physically, maybe this isn't working. But maybe if I could get in here just enough to make him hold water, to make him not be sure of himself. Maybe make the judges think that he ain't, he ain't no good. Mm -hmm. I can win. Mm -hmm. Make him act a f***ing fool. And people don't want that. So that's what he said, what he said. He went in, man. He went all in. I remember. He I mean, interrupted he just, you only talking about your father. Oh, he, he talked about my father passing away and this night. And I understood right. what he meant later, but you know, he's like, yeah, you know, he, you know, I'm talking about my dead father, you know, I'm dedicated to dead father. He's like, well, I didn't have no father. And I was like, well, neither did I, dude. I was raised by my stepdad, you know. But, and you were raised by other people, too. You weren't raised by wolves. So, like, let's just keep that real right now. So that, in my mind, I'm like, dude, I don't have time to explain myself. You know what the f*** I'm trying to say. This is not the first time an athlete has ever dedicated something to somebody in their life. And I have a microphone and you don't. Knock it off. So you tell people, fans are kind of like, that's f***ed up, dude. Like, we he looks like an aggressor for the first time. Like, was, kind of like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? He, like, crossed, he crossed yeah. the line. I mean, he right. crossed the line. And he, and he knew it. He knew it. So um, I was like, okay. Okay. And I'm kind of looking at the judges that are sitting there. I'm like, this is who you guys want to kind of Real challenge shot. me to be so-called ambassador. This is the guy that you want next to me and this and that. I'm being serious. So I was like, okay. You know, when you talk about Mr. Olympia and this and that, it's the physique too, you know. And But you, you definitely want to be comfortable knowing that, like, yeah, the physique, the best physique should win. Not the best personality and this and that. The best physique should win. But then after he wins, you're going to be cool with someone talking like that. So then 
when he was talking about like, how does it feel? How does it feel? I'm 300 pounds or whatever. You know, that's 60 pounds more. Blah, blah, blah. Bigger back, bigger this. How does it feel, Phil? How does it feel? So I knew. I was like, okay. But then something dawned on me. It was like, Phil, you're a basketball player at heart and you've played at a Division One level. And you've played enough street ball to talk so much shit and hear shit talking that this ain't nothing. Don't be acting like you haven't heard a thousand times worse. So use that to your advantage. So I'm just listening. And I'm staring right at him. How does it feel? How does it feel? And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Give me the three reasons. And he had a hard time doing it and this and that. So give me the three reasons. I said 2011, 2013, slam it down, drop the mic. I think I was the first person that really dropped the mic. <laughs> The first athlete to really drop the mic on someone, and I did that and saluted him. Like now, when the whole crowd went crazy, right then and there, I knew I had a problem. Went back to the room. I watched the replay. I made everybody in the room watch it with me. They're like, "Why are we watching this?" I said, "You, you need to see something." What is it? I said, "Watch this reaction after I do the 20, 2011, 2012, 2013." What am I looking at? I said, "Tomorrow night, be prepared. He's gonna do something stupid." So I struck a nerve. The bully got bullied. He, it didn't work. So now what is he going to do? He has to go up another level. So he's got to flip the hair, push. You got each other's faces on stage. Yeah. What was said? Because nobody could hear. What was said? Actually? <laughs> tell me what was said. What did you tell him? What did he tell you? Yeah, kind of, I don't, I don't want to tell. It was a rumor story. actually that it was staged. There was a rumor. Sir. No. That you guys decided to do it backstage. Hell no. no. Whoever said that on crack rocks like they. Hell no, I, no, I tell the truth, like, that wasn't stage. Maybe it was stage for him, maybe someone told him to go do that mm -hmm. They didn't tell me. So when you got in his face, what did he, I mean, he flipped the hair, you got in his face, you got in your face, what happened? He's, what did he say? He said something like, well, you don't know me like that, and this and that, and I said, okay, whatever, shut up. I said, you ain't gonna do mm -hmm. I said, what, what are you gonna do? And basically, what I was saying, what are you gonna do? We're in closing charge, you think we're gonna scrap? Like, they ain't gonna do nothing. So, um, so, that, was just one of those situations where you're like, this is getting really out of hand. It was a great moment though, Phil. I mean, I know it, was, it wasn't fun when you were up there, but I mean, for the people watching, that's what that was. It was up until the point when they separated us, right? Because when Rope Man came over and separated mm -hmm. us, you heard the crowd get really, like, the, you know, it got really loud. And then you could tell the fans wanted a fight, but then it's like, when you see two people like getting into it at a bar or like outside the street, mm -hmm. you'll sit there and watch it until there's until there's like a real ass whipping going on, and then you're like, "Break it up, guys! Come on, guys! Like, don't do that! Don't do that!" And that's how I felt. You guys wanted this more than he and I wanted this. Mm -hmm. Of course, the fans want to see blood. They want to see blood. Yeah, until it's too much. Until, the, until there is actual blood. All right, right, right. Because you could see that once he separated us, and Steve Weinberger had to like get on the loudspeaker and be like, "Knock it off! Enough!" Kai, go over here, Phil, go over here. And the whole crowd was like, ooh. And then you could sense, me being an energy guy again, I could sense that the energy went from here to here. And they had to, they had to probably end that prejudge. I think they ended it early just because of that. Because they're like, well, we can't put these, now we can't compare them because we're like, something, we're, something, something might happen. Something might happen. And they're not prepared for that at all. Like, mm, hell no. If that would have went down, it wasn't. There's like nothing that. they could have done. He and I would have been fucking fighting and shit like that. And I thought about that. I was like, how stupid would we look? Two greased up black dudes rolling around in posing trunks. Yeah, that's really gonna sell tickets the next year. Yeah, it's really weird. One of us have a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> you know, like so yeah, that was But that's in the past. I I'll just say this, man. He's gonna freak out when I say this, but I love Kai Green. I don't know him. But I love him because he made me better. And no one else could get me riled up like that but him. No one else could make me want to fight harder than him. Mm -hmm. It took him to make me want to be Mr. Olympia. I mean, Jay won, you know, that was different. Was he the strongest competitor you faced? Yeah. Most fierce? Because it was emotion. Mm -hmm. He wanted it. I felt it. And I knew it. And I loved taking it away from him every time. It was like... He made what the dream killer is today. He helped that. Mm -hmm. Because I had to go to a dark side. Because remember after a movie, I mean, people looked at me like, asshole. So I was like, and he told me, he was like, man, I didn't think, he goes, I didn't think it was going to work like, 
work out like that for you. He goes, it was kind of like, he, what, verbatim, he said, it was kind of like you were the Ken Waller and Clubber Lang all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like you could, like, you could have done the right. Mm-hmm. You were going to be hated no matter what. I remember after the movie came out, you and I had, actually I was in Denver, we were recording DVD oh, commentary, and yeah. we had a long conversation about this. Yeah. And I remember while, while making the film, like, obviously, I, that was not the intention necessarily. Like, yeah, it was yeah, not yeah. like, let's make film. It was like, you know, we're showing different sides of people, right? Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. it came out, when you told me how you felt, I understood where you were coming from. Yeah. I understood that this was the reaction. It was the reaction you of know? the people, because I was at the movie premiere, and I'm like, this is dope. Yeah, this yeah, it was all you know, we're all, yeah, we're all hugging yeah, and shit. Yeah, and then when the and, public saw and it. And then, yeah, right. you know what's funny? That after the, I think it was the premiere in New York. Mm-hmm. Honey pulls him aside and he goes, and I, you know, it's funny, I was talking to Michael Jai White and he was like, man, this is freaking awesome, dude. You guys did great. This is dope. Like, you guys are going to have so many more opportunities and, you know, hopefully they do another one with you guys in it. You guys are really good. I was like, oh, thanks, man. This and that. Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Honey pulls him aside and he goes, I think we're in trouble, man. I go, why? He goes, because I know what some morons are going to think. And he's gonna be mad, maybe mad at me for saying, you know, using that word, but it's like some jack is gonna say. And I was like, what's that? And he goes, they're gonna th- think that you had everything handed to you, Phil. That you didn't have to work hard and this and that, and they're just gonna hate you for being good. I was like, ah, oh, man, they'll figure this out. It's like a docudrama, man. Shake it, they'll get over it. Hell no. And then when it really happened, I was like, damn, he was right. These guys can't figure this shit out. I've gotta defend myself because this is also affecting my brand. And he's getting his brand up here while mine's slowly climbing. And I'm and people are like, well, you, why are you being the fence of this now? I'm like, cuz, dude, like, you got this one wrong. And I'm like, oh, no, man, this is not right. This is not right. This is messed up. And I was like, F- I need another chance. I mean, we didn't have that. So, you know, I had to live through that for a long time. Yeah. So, like I said, when I say I love Kai Green, I mean, am I sending him Hallmark cards and roses and chocolates and sh-? No, but I mean, I love the guy he is because... Anyone that could push me that hard, it just means that he cares. Mm -hmm. And we both care. So anyone that's a fan of his, they should probably be a fan of mine too because I cared equally, if not more. You know, so I mean, it it was a great rivalry. I think think it was the greatest one of all time. I think if he and I decided to do a show, just he and I, we could sell out an arena. Oh. I think if he and I said, he and I are going to do a show, there is no judges. Like a pay-per-view event. Just no judges at all. There is no prize. We're just yeah, up there. Just for the people People to would see. be like, I'm buying this. Yeah. Guaranteed. So I, I think that's why when I can use that word love because I'm not going to use the word hate because I don't hate the guy. I love you, guys, he, you guys had a conversation recently. Yeah, we had a conversation recently. And, I, you know, it was just, you know, he reached out to me actually. And he, he shot me a DM. And I was like, hell froze over. I was like, wow, this is pretty special. So I'm not going to this away and just say hey thanks bro appreciate it thanks I just told him I was like dude like this is awesome and I really think that we should stay in touch I you know I would love to communicate with you about a lot of different things that we could both do together because in the back of my mind I always thought that a day would come when there would be a time where he and I both wouldn't be competing and that we should develop some type of relationship because of what we brought the fans Mm -hmm and how we could keep people connected to the sport. I said, give me your number, man. And he gave me his number. I, I hit him up, and then um, he had called me and left a funny voicemail. And I and I believe I saved it, so I'll, I'll keep that for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, Special. Yeah, because, I mean, it's like I, I recognize where he's at in his life, and I'm happy for the accomplishments that he's made. I've told you guys that you know, a few times. and. You know, it's all about progression, and I think that he's shown that, like, he was able to break away from the competition stage and still continually grow as a human being and as a bodybuilder and as a, you know, you know, a person that doesn't want to limit himself. Maybe it had to happen where I say, when I say had to happen, like in the universe, it had to happen to where I lost and he and I could have a dialogue because I could receive it, what he's saying. Mm-hmm. He ain't going to tell me this stuff if I'm still winning, you know. But throughout a loss, he probably felt like, I don't know what he felt, but I, from what I gathered, it was like, I need to hit him up and let him know who he is. Um, because, and, that take, and that's a major props on him, man. You know, so respect, love, all that good stuff. Hopefully he and I can um, 
grow some type of relationship. Um, and, and honestly, grow some type of business relationship too because I think two worlds can collide and create something amazing. And I kind of think the sport needs that. I don't think anyone can say that that type of synergy could be equaled by any other mm -hmm. two bodybuilders in the world right now. Mm -hmm. There's no two other that could do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to wrap it up, but like, I just want to say thank you. People at home watching this, thank you for watching this. This is far too long. Um, <laughs> I can talk to you forever, man. <laughs> I mean, we got to do this again. We will. We'll do, we'll do it again. Man. And we got to do it again because there's going to be a lot of new things, not just for me, but from what the industry is going to do. The industry has to respond. It was yeah. great talking Thanks to you, man. Much. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, cool, guys.